I believe that all women have sensors deep down that will tell them if a man is good or bad. But the truth is that a lot of women can have their sensors broken by childhood trauma, by their own emotional problems, insecurities, bad relationships, whatever. You can have those sensors broken and need to relearn what healthy and unhealthy look like when it comes to men and yourself. So Welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin and I run the blog called Mrs. Midwest. As you can see, we have not taken down the Christmas tree yet. I'm not quite ready to part with it. So it will be joining us for today's video, which is all about how to be more successful with men, with dating, with dating towards marriage. I'm hoping that this video can be helpful for maybe some of you in the audience who have struggled with finding the right guy, or maybe you find yourself dating men who just don't want to commit or men who are incompatible. Maybe you just don't understand dating at all or you've gotten out of a relationship and want to jump back in. Whatever your situation, I just want to start off the video by saying it's not wrong to want a relationship. I have a whole video about this, but it's completely natural and humanly instinctual to want a relationship, to want that connection, and even to want that romantic companionship in your life. You're not crazy. You're not desperate. It's okay to want to date, especially to date towards marriage. So let's dive into the video with the first area, which is all about defining the kind of guy you're looking for. Okay, so you wouldn't start any kind of project without a strategy, without a focus, without a goal, and the same should go for dating. Even if you're not, you know, on the hunt, looking all around, or even on online apps, or really putting in a ton of effort, you should still have an idea of the kind of guy that would be compatible to you. I hope I have drilled this into you since the start of my channel, but one of the most important parts of finding your Mr. Right, your soulmate, your man, is compatibility in three areas. Emotional compatibility, future goals, and current beliefs and values. So you're going to need to start all of this out by defining what kind of guy would match up with your personal values and beliefs. For me, this meant I wanted to marry someone who was a Christian, someone who was more traditional in their beliefs, their values, and their worldview. So I really urge you, before you try to go out to find someone compatible to you, you're going to need to define your own beliefs, morals, and values, okay? But on top of that, you're also going to need to define your future goals. Now, this can be very loose because we cannot define what is gonna to happen to us in the future. But you need to know, especially for my ladies in the audience who wanna be homemakers like yours truly, you're gonna to need to define if you want to stay at home, if you wanna be a career woman, if you want children, whatever, because it's a tragedy when someone marries someone expecting to have a certain type of family or lifestyle and then their partner is on a completely different planet. Don't be foolish, don't let that happen. That is a recipe for marital conflict, okay? So if you want to stay at home and be a mom, make that part of your criteria of finding a man, okay? If you wanna be a career woman, if you don't want children, include that in your criteria of a man. You don't wanna marry someone and dash their hopes of ever becoming a father, okay? So you need to define what you want out of life, what you believe, and kind of look for someone who's compatible in that area. This is gonna cut down on conflict, on drama, and on things that'll put that extra tension and strain on the relationship that might cause it to be unsuccessful. And today's video is about how to be successful, okay? So as you define what kind of guy you're looking for, I really encourage you to check back on your history. How do your actions match your actual criteria? You know, what kind of guy you think would work for you? And then look at your own behavior and kind of do a little research project on yourself and see what ways have you been successful or unsuccessful in matching your specific compatibility criteria? But this does lead us to the second area. If you wanna be more successful in dating, I really urge you to give men more than one chance or opportunity to win you over. Now, my husband and I met on a study abroad to the Middle East. We lived in Jerusalem for a month and it was incredible. But honestly, I was in a very isolated environment when I met him. There was only a few other guys on the trip, a very 
very small group of people and because of that I was able to really see him and get to know him and you know what when I first met him it was not love at first sight it wasn't exactly a pride and prejudice kind of hatred situation but it wasn't love at first sight either it, he was just a guy on my trip but once I got to know him once I saw how he interacted with other people how fun he was the stories he would tell his masculinity I fell in love with him okay so I don't know if I would have swiped right on my husband if we were on a dating app I just don't know I can't say that you know if he had slid into my DMs I don't know how I would have responded because it's really difficult to tell if someone's gonna be the love of your life just from one interaction now I do believe in gut instincts and being discerning about the quality of people we let into our life but I also think a lot of people can shut down potential romantic opportunities prematurely before there's even room for you to get to know a man okay so if you really have a bad instinct about a guy that's totally fine you don't need to go out with him again but if you were just kind of unsure about somebody and you shut it off I would encourage you to continue to get to know that person a little bit more the truth is that emotional attraction can grow and blossom especially towards men okay we are not the visual gender okay we're not the ones who are primarily led by our visuals it's a lot more about how we feel about a man what we find attractive about him and his masculinity but a lot of that you can't see right away so if you're just looking for that super hot guy that's gonna make your Instagram pictures look amazing you might be writing off a lot of really incredible men along the way so I encourage you to try to give men a little bit more than a first visual impression you might be blown away by the things you learn about them you know their personalities their humor maybe their careers they've got going on their ambition how they treat people how they treat their family there's so many things that can cause a woman to fall in love with a man and the primary element of that isn't visuals so I really encourage you you know physical attraction is of course important but I want to remind you that that can also grow over time it can grow as you get to know somebody you would be surprised okay so just try to give people a little bit more of an opportunity to win you over give them some more chances and you might find your relationships turning out much more successful than in the past so this does bring us to our third area. If you want to be more successful with men, don't put up with unhealthy people, either the men or yourself. Okay, so if you are constantly dating people who are commitment phobes, cheaters, liars, disrespectful to you or other people, you know, bad kind of men, that often says more about you than you would initially imagine. If you have that pattern of behavior, it's sending off a signal that you need to pay attention to. And that signal is telling you that your heart, your mind is attracted to unhealthiness. And that usually means that you're a little bit unhealthy okay I had to admit this to myself a little bit in the beginning of university when I realized that I was kind of going after these relationships that weren't compatible to me that were just more based on emotions they didn't have long-term goals it was just how I felt in the moment and I had to realize I needed to sort out some things in my own life before I was gonna have more success in dating this can and should, of course, take place in counseling, but if that's not an option for you, there are so many YouTube videos, self-help books, and ways that you can grow to be a healthier person. Of course, for my Christians in the audience, people interested in Christianity, the Bible is the number one way we should be moving towards a healthy heart before Christ and a life lived for the Lord. But of course, you're not going to attract or be attracted to emotionally and mentally healthy men unless you yourself are emotionally and mentally healthy and the good news is that you can change you can improve 2020 can be your year to really blossom in your own mental and emotional or even your physical health okay so as you evaluate your dating history what about those men attracts you to them you know what does that say about yourself and your own security and maybe your own mental or emotional health but following that work you're going to have to learn to identify the those unhealthy men don't put up with time wasters don't put up with people who don't treat you or other people with 
respect. Don't date men that clearly don't want to be with you by cheating on you constantly. Don't date liars. Don't date men that push you past your physical boundaries. Don't date disrespectful and bad people and you will have more success in dating. I know that might seem very rudimentary to you, but I found that a lot of people just need someone to come along and shake their shoulders, look into their eyes and say, you are enabling bad people to hurt you and you need to stop. If you want a healthy, successful relationship in life, free of chronic drama and pain, you're going to need to get healthy yourself, but also say no to those unhealthy men. If you need examples about behavior that's bad in men or red flags, Christians, look to the Bible. There is so much wisdom in Proverbs about the type of men to avoid. Drunks, lazy men, hurtful men, fornicators, adulterers, the list goes on and on. We can look to Proverbs. But in general, I would also say look to YouTube. So many women have created videos about red flags and dating. Gorge on those. I believe that all women have sensors deep down that will tell them if a man is good or bad. But the truth is that a lot of women can have their sensors broken by childhood trauma, by their own emotional problems, insecurities, bad relationships, whatever. You can have those sensors broken and need to relearn what healthy and unhealthy look like when it comes to men and yourself. This brings me to the fourth area. If you want to be more successful with men, stop chasing them. Stop chasing men. Let them chase you. I get this question so much in my email inbox, my DMs, my comment section. How do I know if a guy likes me? You will know because he will make it known to you. <laughs> if a guy likes you and he's masculine, which is probably what the majority of us on this channel are looking for, a good masculine man, he will let you know. Maybe not verbally, but he will show you. He will pursue you. He will take you out. And the problem with pursuing a man from the get-go is you set that precedence in the relationship that he doesn't have to chase you. He doesn't have to work. And as I've spoken about before in my videos on masculinity, Men enjoy the chase. They're built for that work. They're built to pursue a woman. They want that woman that feels just out of their grasp. And I'm not talking about playing games. I'm not talking about playing mind games. I'm not talking about starting drama after you've been in a relationship for three months just to keep things spicy. I'm talking about the initial setup of a relationship. You're going to want to let him come to you, but there are some caveats to this. You can and should show your availability if you're available. I don't need to use these tips anymore as I am married, so I might as well share them with all of you, but you would not believe how much a smile, a little bit of eye contact, a sweet comment, a joke, a little tap on the shoulder will go towards getting you a date. Men might need a little bit of a hint, especially nowadays where we live in a culture where men are very afraid of pursuing women out of, you know, getting turned down, being accused of harassment. So they might not be as intense or aggressive as they used to be, but you can guide them and help them along by a sweet smile, a nice comment, a little bit of flirty joking, the list goes on and on. You don't need to put your goods on for show. You don't need to act very sensual or seductive to get the attention of a man. Rather, you can show that sparkly femininity I always talk about, that elegance, that ladylike grace and kindness, and that charm will draw him to you. I have a whole video about how to be charming. I have so many videos about femininity. Please reference those so again don't chase him let him chase you the guy who is into you and wants to be with you will move mountains to make it happen and I know there's a little bit of that feeling a lot of women have where it's slightly addicting to be with a man who's kind of not interested in you because you want to prove that you can win his affection you want to prove to yourself that you're worthy or it just feels so good to have that distant kind of uninterested male figure in your life but honestly that references back to my number three area, which is all about unhealthiness and what we're attracted to. I understand that unhealthy attraction, you know, wanting a man who's not super interested in you. And I feel like what that really points to is a general misunderstanding of what marriage should be, what a relationship should be. It's good and attractive to have a masculine, ambitious man who has his own thing going on, but he should also care about you and treat you kindly and pursue you and want you. You can have both of those things 
in a relationship, in a marriage. And, and I really urge you to avoid those complicated situations where you're constantly the one chasing the guy. Let him chase you. Let him come to you. It's what they're designed for. And my channel is all about traditional femininity and masculinity. So it's a lot more black and white over here about whether or not he likes you. I can't say if you want a more egalitarian relationship what that would look like, but we're talking about tradition today. All right, it's time for my fifth and final tip. We have so many five tip videos lately and I'm loving it, but this one is all about embracing your femininity. Would you expect it to be anything else? Probably not. This is my channel and we talk about femininity. So really, as you embrace your femininity, as you embrace your femininity, oh, it's so hard to say, you're going to attract that masculine energy. You're gonna attract that masculinity. And that's what we want, traditional women, usually. Women who want to be married, that traditional kind of lifestyle, you're gonna want your masculine man. And to do that, you're gonna to need to work on your femininity. It is nectar to men. Even men who think they don't like femininity, they do. They will come flocking to you. I have many of you even asking how to deal with all the unwanted male attention since you've become more feminine. And I should make a video about that, but it's a real thing. Femininity is going to be your number one asset when it comes to attracting a man and being successful in a relationship because it's going to dichotomize your role to his role. That masculine man, when he encounters that femininity, encounters a whole world of, of qualities and elements that he doesn't have in his life. And once he gets a little taste, he's gonna want more. Having that femininity is of course visual. You can do this with your style, your beauty. This is super easy in our modern world because so many women dress very masculine or androgynous. So, so all you have to do to look more feminine is to wear more dresses, skirts, feminine colors. I go over this in my feminine style videos, but it will set you miles above the competition immediately just by changing your style, showcasing that traditional femininity. It's really about your inner qualities, that generosity, humility, that sweet kindness, compassion, the maternal instinct, all of that sweet, beautiful, creative, wonderful stuff. I constantly yam on about on my channel. So I really encourage you to engage with my older content. There are tons of other femininity content creators on Instagram, on YouTube. Read up on that stuff. Everybody can grow in their femininity. I'm still on that journey myself. I have femininity goals for 2020, just like many of you, and we can continue to grow. Again, as you showcase your femininity, remember it's not about showcasing your sexuality. It's about showing your womanly figure, your womanly personality, that elegant maturity, that ladylike grace, but it doesn't mean being very sensual and trying to get that short-term gratification from a man. Because when we're here for the long distance run, the relationship, marriage kind of marathon, you want to you want to keep things secretive for longer. Watch my video about feminine mystery. There is so much here that will help your relationships because it will contrast you with that masculine energy. So that is all I have for today. If you have extra relationship tips, please leave them below. I can only have a limited amount in these YouTube videos, but I know there is so much more advice out there from all of you beautiful people. Anyone who is married, has successful dating relationships, please share your tips below for our ladies who are struggling in this area. Please remember as well, it's not a bad thing if you struggle in an area. That is what life is. We all have issues. We all have struggles. It's not a moral issue if you struggle with dating and you can always improve. Please don't be hard on yourself. Instead, enjoy the journey. Please take that time to journal and look at what you can improve, where you've kind of been a little unhealthy in the past, and then of course, how you can grow your femininity. So thank you so much for watching. As usual, if you liked the video, please click the like button. It does help grow our community and help my channel. If you're interested in more of this kind of content, I have a couple more relationship videos on my channel, as well as all the feminine content you could ever imagine. Feel free to follow me on Instagram. I do post on my stories daily. And as always, I hope you have a wonderfully blessed and relationship-focused week, my beautiful sisters. Thank you.